Welcome back ladies and gents, um, you would have seen from the intro, but today we're going to be reviewing my War Q helmet. Let's jump in. Right, so, my knees know, I've already opened this, I've had this for going on nearly a year now. Um, so I just wanted to put stuff back in the original way that I received it and rebox it just so you get the experience of when you're opening the box from new what to expect and what you're going to find so these are the box that comes in it does come in a larger box if you order different items um, which I ordered the um, hard case uh, protector for it and the additional lens and the communications piece which I'll go through um, some of the main things in the video I'm going to go through today because this has been quite uh, heavily requested on the channel um, for me to do a review on the walk I'm going to try and go through what I would um, want to know and uh, some of the features and things how to like change the lens how to take it apart for maintenance clean it etc um, like I said I try and cover all bases including how much you paid for it the customization options you've got um, but if I do miss anything and there's anything after the video that you're thinking mm, I could still do with knowing this then put it down in the comments below I'll always answer each and every comment which comes to, uh, through to us um, it's just a better way of building the community um, so anyway, as we open it what you find inside is it comes in this uh, sort of like soft polystyrene to protect it um, that'll probably protect it from scratches in transit out of the way. Um, first thing you'll notice, because I have had it uh, for quite a while, I've already made some uh, changes to it, uh, which is just simply uh, putting double sided uh, velcro tape on and putting my patches um, on either side. And you'll see from this that when it first came, it did come with the see through lens. Um, and I ordered the black lens separately. Now you can order at the same time if you don't want the see-through lens, um, just the black lens. Um, that way then it's probably a little bit less cost uh, because as I'm going through, things like the lenses, additional face mask, even this top cover, you can get replacements for. Um, and as we go through the video, I'll put them uh, probably up in uh, this corner. Um, little videos or down at the bottom little videos going through just explaining different options you can get prices and then obviously replacement parts um, right what is a, a war Q helmet um, in simple terms it is a airsoft fast helmet um, with eye protection built in and a mesh face mask built in closest thing that you can probably resemble it is if you buy a, a fast helmet and probably then a die i4 or die i5 mask um, it does claim to have absolutely zero fogging issues um, and you will not uh, fog on it um, I, I, you can see i'm a big guy i've uh, played this in cold games really hot games and i do sweat a lot in games i also wear uh, glasses um, and I have had absolutely no fogging issues whatsoever, not even a, a tiny bit around the, the, the rims. I know when looking at some of the um, walk reviews and um, comments online that a few people who have issued uh, slight fog issues along the bottom here, um, I wrote into the manufacturer and they said it's a lens fault and simply sent them out a new lens and they've not had issues since. So. The customization options I got on this is the paint job you see on the top of the lid. Now there is a vast amount as you'll see from running along the bottom. Um, there's all different options you can choose. You can also choose to upload your own uh, designs. Um, you can get graphics and all kinds of stuff. But I just wanted something really nice and basic. Bit of camo. Um, and then I've obviously got my um, nickname on the back. Um, these side rails I got customised so you can have these in different colours. Mine's gone for almost like a really dark um, green khaki type colour. And I've followed that through on the face, mask, uh, face mesh um, system on the front so it all just matches in nicely. 
um, and then you can see from the lens that this is a clear lens um, it goes all the way around the edge and what you do have is you have a seal which runs between the face um, face mask and the eye pro which it sort of sits into this ledge here which you'll see later on once I uh, undo it it's all good uh, the only issue I've found with it so far is with GoPro mounts now I opted for this aluminium one it's a cheap one off uh, Amazon um, but what I found is this connection on the bottom where it clips into the helmet uh, it just wasn't enough give within this area where it clips into so I had to dremel it out slightly and I put this velcro back in on um, just to cushion it because it did rattle in the hole a little bit and now when I clip it in it's uh, it's pretty solid it's pretty solid and it holds my GoPro in place quite nicely um, to release it you click the button and it comes out again um, so I mean over, over and just these on the side um, and the velcro at the front um, I've made no other additions other than swapping out the lens and getting uh, the ear communication piece which goes inside um, and speaking of the inside you have a chin strap which is um, it's got a nice uh, fabric cushion on it so if you once you attach the skin it doesn't move it doesn't itch you have the uh, helmet uh, adjuster on the back so if you've got a smaller head you can tighten it uh, my head's quite big so I've got it uh, all the way extended and then inside on these inner parts you have all padding support as well so when it fits to the side of your head it's not rubbing um, and then you have if I pull one of these out these are the pads she's like most fast helmet pads so it's polystyrene with velcro on the bottom um, and nice soft cushion material up top and you can adjust these to wherever the, the velcro batches is inside um, you'll also be able to see from there the air hose so this is what releases a lot of the uh, heat that your head uh, builds up um, which then helps with the fogging issue um, you also have these side vents which you can sort of see through where the heat expels um, and obviously with it being a mesh mash the heat expels from there as well so yeah 100% no fogging issues so now on to one of the parts that a lot of people was asked for is issues with wearing it with glasses now before I change over the lenses I want to do this part so hopefully you'll be able to see through there how it is now give my lack of hair now this is really awkward uh, putting it on and on with glasses I'm not gonna lie uh, but it is doable now you see the size of my specs um, not the biggest ones in the world so if you've got larger specs you might have a, a little bit more difficulty now you adjust this as far as you can go back and it does take a couple of attempts and practices but what you want to do is you're going to put your, your face in first into into here so you're going to hold it like this and you're going to put your face in so like this and it rolls over and then you're in and you attach the thing and you can sort of see from there that i've got plenty of room with glasses and i've got no issues and then like i say absolutely no issues doesn't catch the side of the glasses whatsoever um, and then to take it off you do the reverse you sort of get the glasses to this point in the mesh mash look down and then it comes off now obviously if you don't wear glasses you don't have that problem but if you do have glasses it just feels a little bit awkward but you do get the knack of it and once it's inside you don't know it's like you got your glasses on um and even with the the no fogging issues with the actual lenses my glasses have never fogged i um, not to use not had to use anti-fog or uh, anything like that on it i've heard a couple of people's um had a few issues maybe they've got bigger lenses than me bigger size glasses uh probably sweat more uh, but um yeah i've had no issues with uh fogging which is one of the main reasons i bought the helmet right so on to a few accessories i bought because uh, I did mention them in the beginning of the video I bought the storage case uh, 
uh, which comes with a nice water logo. I got this from an airsoft operator's box, um, which I think fitted in nice. It's nice, hard shell on the outside, um, like a, a really nice silky smooth appearance. You see underneath, uh, it's got these dimples, so when you put it on the ground, it's not going to slide too far. Uh, it's got a dual zip opening. And then when you open it up inside, another nice little walk logo. And then you've got these restraining uh, slits. You simply put the helmet in. Uh, you sort of see the um, helmet fits in nicely. We'll say that I've done it the wrong way around already. So you put the helmet in up here, you restrain it by attaching these straps, and then when you come to close the helmet, it fits in nicely. You zip it up, and that's it protected. You can then carry it to games. You do the same, you lift it up, you restrain it, the straps keep it in place, you undo them, and you've got your helmet. Now, um, one thing I'll say is, these are quite expensive, uh, expensive. you don't necessarily need um, uh, the case, because um, probably if you get a, a plain uh, colour and you're not too loud about it being scratched, I'll put it in a plain... Um, like a sports direct bag or something, or a cloth bag just to carry it. But um, I mainly bought this because I got, did get the custom paint job on the uh, helmet. Now you're going to say to me, it's going to get scratched by playing airsoft, and it will. But I just wanted to give it that extra bit of protection um, when I can, and protect, well, protect the lenses from being scratched as well. So that's why I got the, uh, the case. So moving on. This is the next um, box I got in the parcel, which is, a, I was going to say, it's really awesomely uh, decorated the boxes. They didn't really need to do that, they could just put it in um, plain cardboard ones, probably bring it uh, down the cost a little bit, but I got them, they do have a, a really decent logo block. And inside of this, take the box away, is my spare lens. Take out the lens, you'll see it's not a dark one. Um, it is tinted, so if I can hold it up to the camera and you see through, it's not overly dark, it just is a light shade of tint, but it really does give a nice black profile to the helmet. Um, and what I'll um, go and do in a moment is we'll take the helmet apart and show you the different pieces. And then when I put it back together, I'll put it back together with this one because this is the one I use and you can see what the uh, helmet looks like in the final. <coughs> so this is the next accessory I bought with it, which is the uh, optional a piece to use with your radio comms. Comes in a really nice uh, protective case with the foam padding inside, so you can probably reuse this for, um, I don't know, your torches or sort of something along the day uh, to keep them secure. Because once this is fitted in the helmet, um, I, don't, I don't use the case. Um, and what it is, I mean, is an integral microphone. So this attaches via this section here to the side of the helmet. Um, and then once it's actually installed inside it doesn't rest completely against your ear it's just there's a little bit of a gap and then this sits to the front and then what you have then is this will clip into your PTT connector on your um, on your chest rig um, and then the chest rig connects to the radio um, I have used this in games it's good really clear comms um, no issues with hearing you can change the volume on your radio if it's a bit too loud but it doesn't sit right against the the ear so you haven't got the, the constant chirps and chimes 
um, and when you move your head it moves with it but like I said with the um, the, the visor when we come to take the helmet apart and put it back together again I'll show you how this goes in so let's take it apart and take it down I'm going to do this in real time um, you just need a small Anclu, uh, Allen screw uh, fitment um, screwdriver um, and the, the first thing we're going to take off is the mouth guard which is done by removing these two screws um, really simple to do and it, 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 it really doesn't take too much time um, if you don't want to see me uh, sit here uh, just unscrewing things you can fast forward a little bit and then you'll see the helmet all in pieces but if you like this type of stuff um, keep watching um, it, it, like I said the mouth guard is only these four screws And the Allen key you use, I'm not too sure of the size, but it's most uh, ones you get. I think it, it fits the same as your key, um, your key mods and your rail systems. So if you, you do a bit of maintenance on your own gun, that's what it is. Um, so that's the mouth guard off. As you can see, all these edges here are like a, a rubbery edge. Um, and you'll see there now that that's the groove that the lens is sitting uh, and that gives it its seal um, it's not the only thing there is a thing on the lens um, that's now the helmet with the mouth card off um, you see it's a lot easier now to put it on but you see from this view the space I've got between the lens and the glasses which I think it's really good. <coughs> Excuse me. And now to undo the lens, what we do, we have to go from the inside. And your first thought would be that because of this hole here, these clip out, it doesn't, it works from the inside. So same size Allen key and what you've got in here is these two little screws and behind these screws is a little rubber washer so just make sure you don't lose the washer when I'm doing them and it's good because the colours contrast so the black one uh, the black screws are for the face mask and then you have these four silver screws for your visor so when you do come to undo them and, and put them back in um, you're not going to get confused because they're nicely colour coded for you. So that's that side off, and that's the little rubber washer which sits in between the visor and the uh, the screw head. And then on the outside, um, where you originally thought it was going to fall out and clip, that comes off, and you can see that's now exposed, and the visor's undone from that end. Now. On this side again, just two screws. Just remember when you're taking the second screw out, just to watch for that rubber um, washer system behind that it doesn't fall and you don't lose it. And then that pops out. Same again as the other side. And then what you got is you don't want to yank it because the, the grooves on the side here actually fit over the screw head so you want to just pull it slightly on either side and then the visor actually pops out and you'll see there that it's got this extra protection lining on the inside which gives it that fogging system and this is the ridge which fits along the mouth guard so if I now get the mouth guard and you'll see that it fits within that groove system so that's what I mean it, it, it looks at that stage very similar to like a, a dye mask and then you've just got the main helmet body left which if you put it on then looks like a fast helmet and you can actually see now the chimney mask and then 
they're the three parts which are together. So really simple and straightforward to um, uh, take apart. And like I say, all of these parts are interchangeable. So if you've had it a year and you've decided, oh, I want a different colour ones of these, or I want a different colour lid, you can completely take it apart um, and, and swap them out. I'm planning on probably getting another lid at some stage. Um, uh, just, just to have a change probably between say uh, um, winter months and summer months um, or to go from a mil spec to say a SWAT so you can go to our black um, probably cheaper than buying a complete new helmet again which is probably what my first thought was same with the um, well the night vision mount but I use it for a GoPro you can change the colouring system of that as well and that's all available from the website you'll see all the accessories and changes you can do um, at some stage the only thing I might change is these for like a memory foam type because you know you, you're gonna sweat a lot during games they're gonna absorb the sweat and although you can take them off and wash them I think they're probably gonna be perishable uh, after a time um, so if I now go to rebuild this get rid of the clear lens um, and I'm gonna put back in the dark lens and the more so I'm going to install the radio comms so the way we do this is just back to front so you're going to put the lens in first and all you do it clips onto where so do those two screw holes and just push down on this middle section and it will clip into the top rail there and that's it back in and then we're going to install the comms first and you'll see these two holes line up with the washer and the two screws on the side so where it goes is on this side of the helmet going to do we're going to put the washer in first so this plastic part of the radio comms is not interfering with the, um, the visor we're going to put a screw in the washer on and we're going to push it through and push the second screw hold them in place and then you can grab your outer cover if I've grabbed the right one, which I have, amazing. Uh, push that in. It is a bit fiddly doing it with uh, the first time, but you sort of align the screws. It does help if you uh, you chose magnetic. Screw it down nice and tight. Um, I wouldn't over tighten it just in case you do damage the plastic but that's now the comms piece uh, all connected and in so I'll show you that from up here that's now the comms piece on the inside uh, take my hat off again so now what you can see is I've got the comms piece on the side this wire normally just goes down my back and then connects into the thing um, and then you've got the mouthpiece here and you can already see straight away how much darker these are to the clear lenses and now we are going to reconnect the mouthpiece so, very simple just make sure the microphone is tucked away into the helmet you're going to align the nose piece first into the side and what you want to do is just make sure that it, it's fitting nicely along this rail um, and then choose whichever side you want just make sure the screws are aligned on the side pop a screw in and you're going to tighten one side put a screw in the top And the screw should go in really easy as if there's no restrict, uh, uh, resistance whatsoever if it, if you have got little resistance that just means you have not lined up 
the lens to the bottom face mask. Um, same again on this side. Put the screw back in. Now, you're going to be screaming at the video saying, but wait a minute, you forgot this lens piece. Now, I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you that even though I connected the radio comms to the side, you can undo these first without having to undo the mouth guard. Um, <coughs> it, it will all just sit in place and I just wanted to be able to show you that these two holes here match up with the two screw holes here and it clips in. And then from the inside, you simply get your screw and washer. Reattach it. So if you're halfway through disassembling it, and you think, oh, I've not done this bit right, or I've not done that bit right, there's no right or wrong way of going through it. You can unscrew any of the four screws first. It doesn't have to be the mouth guard. It doesn't have to be the, uh, the lens piece. Um, it's just your option really, um, like I say it's, it's really simple to do and this is how you've all seen my, my, my helmet on other streams and this is how it looks. So I'll put it back on again, show you how I do it with my glasses for one more time and then you'll be able to see what it looks like. So again I've now got the wire which I put on the back. I take the two straps and put them to one side and remember we're going to go face first with the glasses in and it's no different with the um, the comms in, it doesn't really get in the way and that's it now on, you then attach the helmet um, and I think you'll see from there that I think this look is a lot better than the clear lens look. Um, and like I say, even on a really dark day or playing night games, it doesn't really affect your visibility all that much. But what it does do is stop the glare if you do wear glasses from the sun, um, shining on the glasses inside, which then cause you a few issues. But overall, I really like the look of these helmets. Um, I couldn't recommend them enough. The only downside, as I take this off, is... Um, there was a few issues with the delivery uh, time. I think it took about four or five weeks, but it was just at the beginning of the first lockdown. Uh, so I sort of can forgive them from that. <coughs> if you do look through their reviews, it's one of the main things of um, the customer service element and the delivery times uh, being a long time. Um, I've not ordered it or anything from them for a year. So with that, may have improved i hope it has so yeah that's my walk review um any questions you have on the helmet um anything else you want to know i'm always happy to uh, answer and um, it is quite a big investment for airsoft so you don't really just want to run out and spend a lot of money and you don't really know about it but um i really do love my walk i can't recommend it enough i have tried fast helmets and uh, for some reason fast helmets give me headaches, um, this doesn't, it's really comfortable, a lot of room inside. The only downside I'll say is, I've mentioned it on other previous videos, is when you're looking down your scope. Um, because of this section here is quite raised and outwards, you cannot get a clear line of sight without a scope riser. Now what do sell scope risers and they recommend that I think it's at a 45 degree on the rifle. I just don't like the look of them. Um, so I tend to either hold the gun up higher um, with the riser I've got or I use a tracer and I watch where my BB guts go that way. Um, so it is mainly uh, just for looks my scope. That's why I don't spend a lot of money on them. Um, but yeah, other than the scope issue, I, I, I really do like it. And, and let's face it, with protection like this, snipers are going to love you all day long and you're going to be the best friend. Um, I have been shot in the head a few times by snipers. It is loud, it does take you aback and I've fallen on the ass a few times um, because of the, uh, the shock and the noise of it but um, I, I've been shot square in the visor, square in the mouthpiece and there was no visual damage afterwards, no BB shattered upon impact uh, and came through. So 
Yeah, overall, I really do like the walk. Right guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you, you're wondering about the sound in the walk, um, if you look at a few of our game day videos, um, and you can hear us speak, that's me wearing the walk with the GoPro mount attached on the top, and the, the sound's pretty clear. Um, there's no muffling whatsoever, so if you're going out recording your game days and you're worrying about the sound being muffled because you're wearing such a, a large helmet, then have a look at them videos. You can check out the sound quality there. Um, if you uh, like the videos, um, please consider liking and subscribing. Don't forget about our giveaway. We were so close now. Amazing that 400 of you um, uh, are subscribed. We haven't got far to go. 500 and then we do the, guess, the giveaway uh, pistol prize. And then another 500 on from that. We give away a 150 pound lucky few box. And we've got game day videos coming up. So what's not to like? Cheers guys.